are many false prophets out there and false teachers on the radio, on TV, and all over the internet, on YouTube. Um, there's a common heresy that I'm coming across from King James Bible believers uh, who are teaching, uh, they're removing repentance from the gospel. Um, or they're, they're redefining repentance. Um, and I want to focus on a couple people in particular, Edward P.F. 123 and Kevin K. Zach. And um, there are just so many out there that are just trying to remove repentance. we got Kent Hovind, Stephen Anderson, um, I think this Patrick the Baptist guy teaches no repentance. You know, uh, David Stewart, his website, Jesus is Savior, he, he denies repentance. This is just ridiculous. Um, total heresy. Anyways, I came across this article, and I think it's really good. Um, and when I was reading it, I was thinking of Edward P.F. and Kevin K. Zach. Um, it covers pretty much exactly what I think they teach. It might vary a little bit. But anyways, I'll start reading it. Repentance is no more a meritorious work than its counterpart, faith. It is an inward response. Genuine repentance pleads with the Lord to forgive and deliver from the burden of sin and the fear of judgment and hell. It is the attitude of the publican who, fearful of even looking toward heaven, smote his breast and cried, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Luke 18.13 Repentance is not merely behavior reform, but because true repentance involves a change of heart and purpose, it inevitably results in a change of behavior. Like faith, repentance has intellectual, emotional, and volitional ramifications. The intellectual, the intellectual element of repentance as a change of view, a recognition of sin as involving personal guilt, defilement, and helplessness. The emotional element is a change of feeling, manifesting itself in sorrow for sin committed against a holy God. The volitional element is a change of purpose and inward turning away from sin, and a disposition to seek pardon and cleansing. Each of those three elements is, a deficient, is deficient apart from the others. Repentance is a response of the total person, therefore some speak of it as a total surrender. Obviously, the view of repentance is incompatible with no lordship theology. What do no lordship teachers say about repentance? They do not fully agree among themselves. So these are people who try to remove repentance from the gospel or redefine repentance. They're also trying to teach that you can make Jesus your savior without him being your lord. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Uh, so, the first, and, and they vary and how they do it. Um, the first one that I'm going to cover, I think, is more along the lines of what Edward P.F. 123 teaches. So some radical no-lordship protagonists simply deny that repentance has any place in the gospel appeal. Though genuine repentance may precede salvation, this is what someone who believes this would say. Though genuine repentance may precede salvation, it need not do so, and because it is not essential to the saving transaction as such, it is in no sense a condition for the, that transaction. Okay, so that's wrong. This view hinges on making the saving transaction nothing more than a forensic justification. God's gracious declaration that all the demands of the law are fulfilled on behalf of the believing sinner through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The single-faceted saving transaction does not even bring the sinner into a right relationship with God. Thus, the radical no-lordship view offers this particular formula. If the issue is simply, what must I do to be saved? The answer is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16.31. If the issue is the broader one, how can I get on a harmonious terms with God? The answer is repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 20.21. The the insensuate the insinuations underlying these statements are staggering. How or why would anyone who is unrepentant raise the question, what must I do to be saved? What would such a person be seeking salvation from? In what sense is salvation a separate issue from getting on a harmonious terms with God? Is it possible to obtain eternal salvation with no sense of the gravity of one's own sin and alienation from God? 
that is the implication of radical no lordship no lordship teaching so bible clearly teaches that, that jesus told his disciples to go and preach repentance okay so to say that repentance needs to be removed from the gospel is completely against what the bible teaches now the next uh variation of this no lordship no repentance gospel is is going to be more along the lines of what kevin kazak uh teaches and i figured i knew that he didn't believe you know in a, in a right repentance i've talked to this guy for a little while and i wanted to give him the benefit of doubt but I pretty much knew, I knew it would come out anyways, but he asked me, how do you define repentance? And I said, to turn from sin to God. And he said, no, it's just a change of mind. Well, that's false. And that's just, that's where I cut off ties, because that's just heresy. And I'm going to show that. So, But the predominant no-lordship view on repentance is simply to redefine repentance as a change of mind, not a turning from sin or a change of purpose. This view states, in both the Old and New Testaments, repentance means to change one's mind. Um, and another point that I want to make is a lot of people apply to this law of first mention, which is something that is a man-made uh, doctrine that's it's not found in the Bible. Um, and it can be helpful and it's interesting, but it's not 100% accurate. Okay, so what it is is that you, you look for a word, and if you find the first time that word is mentioned in the Bible, then you kind of get a basic definition of that word that word. It's not 100% accurate. Um, and and it can really mess people up, especially when it comes to repentance, because the first verse that you come to is in the Old Testament that says that the Lord repented. And so, I mean, is the Lord a sinner? No. Does the Lord need salvation? No. So does repentance, as far as the Lord is concerned, repenting, is that the same as a, a lost sinner repenting for salvation? No. I mean, it's a different context, and... Y it just doesn't work. So, <laughs> anyway, um, is repentance a condition for receiving eternal life? Yes. If it is repentance or changing one's mind about Jesus Christ, no. If it means to be sorry for sin or even resolve to turn from sin, repentance by that definition is simply a synonym for the no lordship definition of faith. It is simply an intellectual exercise, and it is false and heresy. Note that the no lordship definition of repentance explicitly denies the emotional and volitional elements in, uh, in repentance. No lordship repentance is not being sorry for sin or even resolving. To turn from sin. It simply means changing one's mind about his former conception of God and disbelief in God and Christ. Again, one could experience that kind of repentance without any understanding of the gravity of sin or the severity of God's judgment against sinners. It is a remorseless, hollow, pseudo-repentance. Repentance in the Bible. Does the no-lordship definition of repentance square with Scripture? It clearly does not. It is true that sorrow from sin is not repentance. Judas felt remorse, but he didn't repent. Matthew 27, 3. Repentance is not just a resolve to do better. Everyone who has ever made New Year's resolutions knows how easily human determination can be broken. Repentance certainly is not penance, an activity performed to try to atone for one's own sins. But neither is repentance a solely intellectual issue. Even so, Surely even Judas changed his mind. What he didn't do was turn from his sin and throw himself on the Lord for mercy. Repentance is not just a change of mind. It is a change of heart. It is a spiritual turning, a total about face. Repentance in the context of the new birth means turning from sin to the Savior. It is an inward response, not exter external activity, but its fruit will be evident in the true believer's behavior. Luke 3.8 it has often been said that repentance and faith are two sides of the same coin. That coin is called conversion. Repentance turns from sin to Christ, and faith embraces him as the only hope of salvation and righteousness. That is what conversion means in simple terms. Faith and repentance are distinct concepts, but they cannot occur independently of each other. Genuine repentance is always the flip side of faith, and true faith accompanies repentance. The two cannot be separated. Isaiah 55, 1-13, the classic Old Testament call to conversion, shows both sides of the coin. Faith is called for in several ways. Come ye to the waters, 
Buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Hear, and your soul shall live. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. Um, <clears throat> but the passage also enjoins repentance. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. As that verse demonstrates, the issue in repentance is moral, not merely intellectual. What repentance calls for is not only a change of mind, but a turning away from the love of sin. Rather, the decision by the whole man to turn around is stressed. It is clear that we are concerned neither with the purely outward turning nor with the merely intellectual change of ideas. And uh, here's another definition of repentance. Radical conversion, a transformation of nature, a definitive turning from evil, a resolute turning to God in total obedience. Mark 1, 15, Matthew 4, 17, and 18, 3. This conversion is once for all. There can be no going back, only advance and responsible movement along the way now taken. It affects the whole man, first and basically the center of personal life, then logically his conduct at all times and in all situations, his thoughts, words, and acts. Matthew twelve thirty three. Um, <clears throat> Mark seven fifteen. The whole proclamation of Jesus is a proclamation of unconditional turning to God, of unconditional turning from all that is against God, not merely that which is downright evil, but that which in, in a given case makes total turning to God impossible. It is addressed to all without distinction and presented with unmitigated severity in order to indicate the only way of salvation there is it calls for a total surrender total commitment to the will of god it embraces the whole walk of the new man who is claimed by the divine lordship it carries it with the founding of the new personal relation of man to god it awakens joyous obedience for a life according to god's will so Yes, repentance is required for salvation, repentance and belief. Repentance is turning from sin, and faith is turning to God. And they, they're they both needed for salvation. And anyone who says otherwise is a heretic. Um, you know, while I was talking to this Kevin K. Zach guy, we are talking about Brian Moonen, and uh, I think, still think that Brian Moonen has a good... Uh, ministry and I don't see anything wrong with anything until he starts preaching on a post-trib rapture or something like that then I'll be done with him but so far I don't see that he teaches repentance and that's one of the main things you know that that I would require um, that someone would teach and stand on um, and he was he said that because Brian Moon had preached against video games like Mario and Sonic that he's a legalist well then I guess I'm a legalist too, because those games are wicked, and no Christian should be involved with that trash. So, uh, and then he, this Kevin Kays, that guy, calls Jason Cooley a reprobate because he believes that there's a, a difference between saving faith and, and faith that doesn't save. But that's what the Bible teaches, that some have believed in vain. Okay, that's not a saving faith. The Bible does teach a clear difference between a faith that saves and a faith that doesn't. You know, faith without works is dead. That would be a faith that doesn't save, okay? Um, he showed me this video that this Rick Jacoby guy made against Jason Cooley, and Jason Cooley is a heretic because of the post-trib rapture and because of you know him preaching about going to a church building, and I think that he's kind of building his own cult, but he's right on this aspect that there are Two, they're different faiths, okay? A faith that saves and a faith that doesn't. And this Rick Jacoby guy is just messed up, and he teaches lies about the parable of the sower, and I'll probably just rebuke him and make a video on him eventually. But, uh, you know, for any of you people, any of you heretics that teach this trash, this no repentance gospel, or repentance is a change of mind, maybe, uh, since you can't handle the King James Bible and what it teaches, maybe you should get a, a NIV or not an NIV, but a, a New King James. That's what you need. You need to get a New King James, 
because you see it removes uh, repentance uh, 44 times and it removes Lord 66 times so here you can get your New King James Bible and it'll take Lord and repentance right out of it because that's what you're preaching so you know you can't handle the King James Bible you can't handle the Word of God and the truth so just go get yourself a perverted New King James and I think that'll suit you better so well, really, honestly, I think that you need to repent, and you need to learn that repentance is required for salvation, and perhaps you haven't repented yourself, and you're not saved, and that's why you don't understand this. But you need to repent, and you need to learn that repentance is turning from sin to God. Okay? So thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.